Welcome, everyone, to another Fish Report Live. My name is Craig Fissinger. I am 100% tonight. Uh, that's Ken Francis there. He's about 50% tonight. <laughs> and back in our sound room, it's about 50% back there, too. That's because TK, our sound guy, is back there. But uh, Heavy D, our video guy, took the week off this week. So uh, uh, good luck to you back there, TK. But, Ken, last week the high school boys basketball season tipped off. We started talking high school boys basketball. We're going to continue that tonight, and we're even going to talk a little girls ball tonight, too, aren't we? Yes, we are, Craig. You know, it's one of our favorite times times of the year high school boys and girls basketball and uh we're going to be going to fort Lormy craig and talking to their new boys basketball coach Corey breton along with his senior sharpshooter devin braun as well as greg going over to houston and talking to coach ward of the houston wildcats he's got his team off to a 3-0 and start early on in the Shelby County League. So really looking forward to our interviews tonight, Craig, and it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, just starting to get into the hoop season here, so uh, it's getting interesting, and, and I can't wait to talk about it tonight. Uh, but before we get to all that, just like we do every week, got a weekly trivia question, and tonight I understand it's a basketball question, right? Yes, it is, Craig. And Corey Britton, like we said, is Fort Laramie's new boys basketball coach. He's actually sitting at two wins right now. He's got a few more to go to become Fort Laramie's all-time leading coaching victories okay so the question is who holds the record for most victories coaching fort lomi boys basketball is it john coach kramer george hamlin dan hegemeyer or charles sharp all right well i remember three of those guys for sure and uh, i guess the key there is coaching victories at fort lomi at right? we're right. not we're not at new knoxville or st mary's or anything no. like that okay um and, and charles sharp is that uh you making that one up no or that no he coached fort lomi uh the, the generation before us may remember him. Okay. Maybe right. two generations before. I would have had to check the record books out to, to get that one. But I, I don't know the answer to that. So I'm going to ask the viewers out there for a little help. If you're watching us on the Fish Report Live page, just scroll down, submit your answer there, and you can check the results. If you're watching us on NK Telco Cable TV Channel 3, we will have those results for you at the end of the show. All right, Ken, well, let's get things started. And like I said, last week, the boys' basketball season tipped off uh, the first week's in the books. And let's check out the early standings in the SCA. I'll see where we're at. Well, Craig, Rushi had the bye week, so they're sitting at 0-0 right now in the league, 2-0 overall. Fort Laramie, Fairlawn, and Jackson Center were all victorious last night or, or last week at 1-0, and and Anna Bakken's and Houston at 0-1. But it's very early yet, Craig. Let's give this a few weeks of a shake out, and we'll see where everybody's standing. All right, well, we talked about the Raiders uh, last week, and, and uh, you and I were at both games this past weekend, and uh, we thought they were going to be good this year, but, you know, you just never know till they go out there and take the floor. But I guess it went about as well as could be expected. They started out Friday night playing Bradford, and let's talk about that game a little bit. Uh, you know, they had a first-year over head coach over there, so they're – Bradford's still adjusting. They're obviously going to get better. But like I said, the Raiders played pretty well for opening night, didn't they? Yes, they did, Craig. You see some videos here of it. Uh, Bradford's under new first-year coach over there, so they're still getting uh, gelled with their program. But uh, the Rushi Raiders uh, came out in full force. You know, they've got nine, they're ten seniors on the team, Craig, and uh, they really stuck it to Bradford. Uh, they had uh, ten kids score. Six of them were in double figures, Craig, rolling to a 91-20 to victory. Dave York had a nice game off the bench with 16 points. Senior guard Nolan Francis chipped in 15. Adam Hoyne, Justin Garrity, both off the bench with 11. And Bryce Cadonier, Jacob Plyman with 10 apiece. So it was a good win on opening night for the Raiders. Yeah, you know, sometimes when you're rotating that many kids in and out, it's sometimes it's a little bit hard to get in the flow of things. But, uh, um, you know, it's a good opportunity to get a lot of kids to play. And, and, and uh, like I said, a good opening night for the Raiders. Yes, it was. And we knew going in, uh, Craig, uh, that that game uh, would not be so tough. But we knew the game Saturday night would be a different challenge. Yeah, they came back Saturday night playing the uh, St. Henry Redskins. And we were awfully excited to, to see their star over there, Ryan Mike, to see how the Raiders did against him. And, and they, they pretty much uh, they held him in check for the most part, didn't they? Yes, they did. Uh, 
Rushi's Bryce Kadan, you're defending him, uh, did a very good job. Uh, but uh, the 6'6 uh, Dayton signee uh, is a very talented player. But uh, Rushi really had a great game. Uh, the game was tied at 31 at halftime. Uh, St. Henry knocked down six three-pointers, which kept him in the game. Rushi came out defensively a lot stronger the second half and uh, got St. Henry to be a little bit off target. Uh, did a nice job on Ryan Mike's cell. Uh, more importantly, Craig, the Raiders hit 27 of 31 free throws in that game, which was the key to the victory. Uh, final score is 70 to 57. Uh, Rushi's Gavin Hoyne led the Raiders with 25 points. Nolan Francis chipped in 20. Uh, overall, Craig, just a very good quality win against a Division three school for the Raiders. Yeah, Mike Sell got his, you know, he ended up with 20 points in the game, and of course he's going to get his points, but, uh, you know, you hope, like you said, kind of held him in check for the most part, and, and uh, um, they got the victory, and that's the important thing. Yes, they did. All right, well, uh, that takes care of our Raiders highlights. Uh, one other game I wanted to ask about last Friday was that Fairlawn Anna game, and that turned out to be a pretty close one. Fairlawn got the victory in that one, 61-57, to and, uh, you know, anytime you beat Anna, that's a quality win. Uh, they're Fairlawn star over there, Nathan Lessing, I believe, had 27 points in that game. And a question I had for you is, is uh, you know, he, he's a great guard over there. In your opinion, can, can he carry that Fairlawn team throughout this season, or, or, or does he need a little help? Craig, uh, Nathan is a great player. I've seen him play last year a couple times. Uh, as a freshman, he averaged nearly 15 points a game. This year, he's off to a great start. The sophomore guard, he can carry a team to – he can carry Fairlawn to victories on a given night, Craig. But throughout the whole season, he's going to need some help. Uh, other teams are going to get more scouting reports on Farrell and learn how to maybe double team him, shut him down, do different things. But uh, he is very talented. He is very tough to stop. The key to his game also, Craig, is adjusting to the defensive pressure, drawing fouls as he goes to the basket. So he's very good at uh, uh, drawing fouls against the other team's best defender or whoever it might be. So uh, Nathan Lessing, a great player over there, and uh, you know he's got a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, we're going to see how good he is this Friday night. They take on the Fort Army Redskins, so uh, uh, we'll see what, what Lessing uh, does against them or what the Redskins do against him. Uh, well, Like you mentioned, in, in those early standings, uh, Rushi's sitting at 2-0 and right now, even though they don't have any league games in. Uh, but the other team sitting at 2-0 and right now is the Fort Army Redskins. Uh, they beat Bakken's on the road Friday night, uh, and they had a close one at New Knoxville on Saturday night. Got the victory in that one. I know there were some fans out there probably wondering how first-year uh, head coach Corey Britton was going to do over there, uh, but they have to be pleased after the results of last weekend. We actually got a chance to stop in at Fort Laramie earlier this week and talk to the new head coach uh, after his 2-0 and start, and let's check out the video and, and see what he had to say. The Fort Lomi boys basketball team is off to a 2-0 start under first-year head coach Corey Britton. Britton joins the Redskins after last coaching at Riverside High School. Returning lettermen for Fort Lomi this season include Devin Braun, Grant Oberding, Ty Frilling, Clint Ratterman, and Andy Gruy. We spoke to Coach Britton about his team, what he's looking forward to in the coming weeks, and the basketball spirit in the Fort Lomi community. Fish Report live here in Fort Laramie with Redskins first-year head coach Corey Britton. And, Coach, gotten off to a nice start this season. You're 2-0 and after this past week, and more importantly, you're 1-0 and in the Shelby County Athletic League. Uh, talk about this past weekend a little bit. Uh, what things are you happy with? What things do you need to get better at moving forward? Um, I, sort of how we expected it. We went over to Bakken's Friday night, and defensively I thought we played really well. We played with a ton of energy over there, and uh, that's what you need to do in the county. I mean, you got to come out, and we, we sort of talk like a boxing match. We wanted to come out and throw the first blow, and I think we were up 17-7 to 7 with about a minute minute left in the first quarter. So we came out and threw that first punch, and we were up by 10, and we did a nice job of sustaining things. I don't think the lead ever dropped lower than 12 in the entire game, and I think in the third quarter there we ballooned it out to about 20, 22 points. So we did a nice job of sustaining things Friday night, and, and winning the first county league game is huge. And, and the best part about it was it was on the road too, so that means we have another county game at home later in the year. Um, in the second New Knoxville game, we didn't play our best basketball, but we found a way to win, which is an unbelievable trait for a team that's been together for four weeks. So we, we found a way to fight through things, and when things were tough, we found a way to win, and that's, and that's what's important. We were down 11, I think, with three minutes left, and, and we raced that deficit and, and really clawed back and made plays down the stretch. All right, well, a couple of your big scores this past weekend were seniors Grant Overding and Devin Braun. What do you like about those two guys? Uh, they're leaders. Um, they're two kids that have put in a lot of time over the years and, and put a lot of time over the summer, and they're, and they're buying into what we're trying to do here, and, and, and it's huge. You have to have two good players and buy into your program, and I think they've done a nice job of buying in, and they've done a nice job so far, and we need them to be leaders, and they've done what we expected them to do so far this year. 
All right, and when teams decide to focus on Devin and Grant, who else on this team could step up and, and score for you? I think our depth is one of our strengths. We have a lot of a lot of kids that can come play. We have uh, junior guard Drew Warman, and we have five other seniors. So I think a lot of people sort of forget that about us. We have some unknowns about us, but we have seven seniors on our roster. Ty Frilling can step up and score. Andy Grewery has turned himself into a pretty good shooter. Clint Ratterman's been a fantastic leader for us. Um, Tanner Rosengarden might be one of the better shooters in our program and he's a junior off our bench. We, we have some players. Uh, those players just need to believe in themselves a little bit more, and I think we'll be fine. I mean, we're just developing talent, and four weeks in with a new coach, and it, we're not going to be where we need to be right now, but by hopefully by February we are. All right, well, let's talk about this Friday. You have Fairlawn coming up, and there's a team that may have surprised a few people beating Anna last Friday night. Uh, what do you, you – know, they obviously have a pretty good softball over there, and Nathan Lessing, what do you need to do well against the Jets on Friday? Um, we need to come and play with energy and consistency. Uh, that's something we don't do well right now. We don't play with energy for 32 minutes. Um, you saw that at the end of practice, we went for 117 in a shooting drill in three minutes and with no energy, and then we decided to pick it up. I think we got 146, so that's just the difference. I mean, when we play with energy, uh, we, we can be pretty good. And then the second thing is we have to be able to control Lessing. Um, he's probably one of the better guards in the league. I don't think anybody can really argue that much. He went for 27 on Friday night, and from what I heard from a couple people that are at the game, pretty much controlled things for him. So we have to be able to control him, and if we do, we'll, we'll give ourselves a chance to win in the fourth quarter. All right, and one more question, Coach. Uh, our first opportunity to meet you, this being your first year at Fort Laramie, what's your early impressions of the Laramie Army and the, uh, the, the, the basketball community here? Oh, uh, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's, this, is a, this is a dream job for me. Um, I knew um, just from growing up a lot about the experiences and the history of, of not only Fort Laramie but this area. I mean, I think every Shelby County League school, maybe except for one, has made it to the Final Four. So, I mean, this is – this is the hotbed for basketball, so um, and an, it's great. Everybody, anywhere you go, people want to know how the basketball team is and how the kids are doing. And my family came in for a scrimmage a couple weekends ago. We went up to eat out up in town, and I couldn't leave without people asking me how the scrimmage goes. So I, I love it. Uh, the fans are awesome. We had a great crowd the other night at Botkins, and we had a pretty good crowd on Saturday night um, with the circumstances of the Ohio State playing. So I'm sure we'll be out in full force on um, Friday, and then I'm sure we'll have a huge crowd over at Rushi on Tuesday night too. So, All right, thanks, Coach. Not a problem, thank you. We also talked to Fort Laramie senior star Devin Braun. We're now with senior Devin Braun, and Devin, you've gotten off to a nice start this season as well, and I know that's due to a lot of hard work you put in over the summer. Uh, talk about this past summer. What did you do to become a better player? Uh, every day I'd be outside in our driveway. I'd be working on my individual moves. I'd be – getting my threes up of course and I put a lot of work in trying to get my vertical up and a lot of that kind of stuff. All right and you've got a new coach this year. Talk about those first couple practices. Was it uh, a new learning experience entirely or just some minor adjustments? Uh, I think practices they're like like they're fun. We we get music every now and then that gets everyone excited and it's just a whole new atmosphere I guess. Last question. I know you can shoot the ball. I know you can bury the three. I've seen you do it before, but there's a lot of kids in this county that can dunk now. And I want to ask you, I know you're about, what, 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, if you yeah. get an opportunity on the open floor, any chance you're throwing one down? Yeah, I had one Saturday. I love dunking, so any chance I get, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> All right, Ken, that was uh, Fort Army senior Devin Braun and his coach, Corey Britton. And uh, since we're talking about the Larmy boys, I understand you have a, a kind of a public service announcement as well, don't you? Yes, Craig. Uh, the Fort Larmy and Anna boys are teaming together for a holiday helpers game next Friday night, December 19th. Fans from both schools are encouraged to bring a gift to the game, and then we in turn it will be taken to Dayton's Children's Hospital by the Redskins senior boys basketball players as a way to bring a little holiday cheer to the families at the hospital. For each gift you bring, you will receive a free voucher for a bag of popcorn courtesy of the athletic department. Items to bring could be for any age, infant to 18 years old, ranging anywhere from cards, Uno, Go Fish, Animals, Barbie dolls, books, supplies, Hot Wheels, toys, trucks, and pacifiers. Please make sure you go to this game and bring your holiday gift. All right, that's good stuff, Ken. Always nice when athletes can do other stuff outside the community. I particularly like the game Go Fish, uh, yeah. obviously. But uh, listen, that's going to do it for our first half of the show. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, uh, but when we come back, we're going to be talking some girls basketball with uh, house and head coach Greg Ward. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there. Well, I'm digging on you. I'm digging on you. What's poor boy to do? You got me acting a fool. I'm digging on you. I'm digging on you.
All right, welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live. Ken, before the break, we were talking some boys basketball. Going to change gears now and talk a little girls basketball. And uh, three games on Tuesday night, a couple league games, one non-league game. And let's take a look at the current standings and see where we're at right now. Well, Craig, Fort Lormy, Lady Redskins sitting atop the league standings at 3-0, and just like they've been the last few years. But I think the game last night against Rushi proved that uh, – as this season goes on, I think things are going to stay fairly tight. And, uh, you know, Rushi played Fort Laramie very tough the other night. They only losing by five points. Houston also at 3-0. and Anna 1-1. and Rushi 1-1. and And uh, Jackson Center, I think, will still be a pretty good team also on 0-1. So, um, you know, that's the girls' standings. It's still pretty early, Craig. Things will start to shake out more in the next week. All right. Well, you mentioned that Rushi-Fort Laramie battle last night. I actually had a chance to, to check that out. You know, last year, uh, Rushi lost both those uh, games by – one game by 45 points one game by 47 points last night a lot closer wasn't it yes it was Craig you know Harushi actually jumped out to a really good first quarter took a 20 to 16 lead after one quarter uh Fort Laramie took the lead at halftime 26 to 24 uh Rushi kept it close in the second half uh but Fort Laramie's Jessica Berger was too much for the Raiders to handle down the stretch she finished with 17 points on 9 or 10 free throw shooting and junior Holly Fryhouse had a good game with 16 points. But uh, Rushi played them very tough. They actually had the game down to two points late, in, uh, but some key free throws by the Redskins down the stretch uh, held the Raiders off. Rushi, uh, Kylie Wilson had a big game with 17 points. Sophomore Maria Heron had 13 points, 10 of which came in the first quarter. And senior Claudia Monin continues her nice play for the Raiders with 11 points. Yeah, I think one of the keys of that game actually was uh, Maria Heron there. She she started out really hot, had 10 points that first quarter. Uh, they they kind of made a switch on defense on her, put uh, their star Jessica Berger on her. Uh, Maria ended up with just three points the rest of the game. They kind of held her in check, and uh, um, that, that was uh, definitely, uh, like I said, something that the Raiders missed as far as scoring goes. So. All right, well, Ken, you know, you, the Army's at the top of the standings right now, 3-0. and The other team tied with them right now is the House of Wildcats. They've won their last three in a row. All three are county games. Uh, they're led by head coach Greg Ward, who's actually in his 15th season for the Wildcats. We're happy to have him live on the phone right now. Coach Ward, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Uh, well, thanks for having me. All right, well, first of all, congrats on what was a pretty big win on the road last night over Fairlawn. I know they have a pretty good player over there in Audrey Francis, and any time uh, you go up against her, it can be a little dangerous. So uh, what were the keys to your victory last night? Well, like you say, Amanda is definitely our first major concern, and then, of course, the road girls having a real nice season so far. For those, So those were first two uh, considerations is 
you know, we wanted to hold them down under their average, which we did a good job on. But the uh, dungeon girl, she uh, went off for 17 on us and kept them in the ball game, made it uh, a lot more interesting than we hoped it was going to be. All right, well, let's talk about your team a little bit. Uh, you know, I was talking to another coach in the area uh, this week. It told me it's always nice when you can have, have three players that have had good success in your program in the past. Uh, it seems like you have three girls with, with Macy Stang, Nicole Meyer, and Jenna Winter, all three girls that have been successful in your program in the past. Uh, w- would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. Uh, the experience they have, uh, you know, uh, the level they played at last year and coming back again, uh, always a big plus for any team. Uh, you know, they've been through the battles, uh, so it's always nice to lean on them when the younger girls you're trying to bring along uh, struggle. And hopefully they'll step up and uh, get you to those rough spots. Hi, Coach Ward. This is Ken. Uh, appreciate you taking time to be on our show with us tonight. Uh, earlier in the year, you were quoted as saying you were a little bit concerned about the depth of your Wildcat team. After five games this year, how would you feel that the depth of your team has improved and what strides do they need to make? Well, definitely it's improved. It's not where we'd like it to be yet. You know, we still have young players that are making making mistakes that young players make. I mean, it's nothing just that's still just a growing process. That the more floor time they get, the more they'll learn, the better uh, they'll be in those situations that uh, they haven't faced before at this level. You know, we got a freshman playing a lot in the Monier girl, and, you know, she comes from eighth grade to, get, to go to uh, uh, varsity. That, so that's a big jump. I don't know if everyone understands that, but I mean, the speed of the game and the intensity is just uh, – a whole lot better, but she's doing a great job of acclimating herself and uh, has uh, really stepped up and uh, uh, definitely added to our depth. Uh, and then uh, Kara Meyer, uh, who we thought we was going to make a split player with a place in JV and varsity, but she uh, she has stepped up enough that uh, she's been a full-time varsity player and uh, been a real big force, uh, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Coach, uh, let's talk about some of your strengths. And one of your strengths this year has been the three-point shot. Uh, earlier in the year against Fairlawn, you had a game in which you hit six three-pointers. You also had another game where you hit four three-pointers. Uh, does this surprise you some, and what is the confidence level in the uh, Wildcats shooting the three-pointer? Well, we've definitely been something we've stressed uh, to make that more of a part of our game. Uh, probably a little more successful than I thought we would be maybe this early. I uh, hope it continues because the three-pointer is something that can uh, you know, be a huge, huge asset and if you get to rely on them too much and you're cold, it can also hurt you. But uh, so far, it's definitely been a help to, well, it, uh, it did kill us the first game. We give up eight threes against Covington. But uh, uh, definitely, it sure helps when you can uh, hit a few of those in the game, especially in a tight game. Coach, let's talk a little bit about your next game coming up. It's Saturday against the Rushi Raiders. Uh, this is a Rushi team with a lot of seniors, uh, a team you played three times last season, twice in the regular season, once in tournament. Uh, what are your concerns with the Raiders coming into that game? Uh, what it seems like it always is, their length and their athleticism. Um, you know, they just, at all the positions, they're going to outsize us pretty much. Uh, and, and just how long armed they are and, and how quick they get to the ball and just how hard it is for us to run our offense against them. And then with their size, you know, they're, they're, they're a difficult task for us to guard because there's so many mismatches. You know, and the Wilson girl's just, uh, she's just a top notch player. I just, uh, I love to watch her play. I hate to coach against her, but I love to watch her play. <laughs> Hey, Coach, listen, one more question, and we'll let you go. This isn't so much a question about your team, but uh, uh, um, during the preseason I saw a, a newsletter come out by the Ohio High School Association that was talking about uh, their points of emphasis this season, and one of the things they mentioned in there was hand-checking and that they were going to try to enforce that rule a little bit more this season. I just wanted you know, Ken and I have talked about it uh, amongst ourselves. I wanted to ask you as a coach, is that something you've seen this season? Are, are, are referees enforcing that anymore, or, or are they letting it go like they have in the past? Any thoughts? No, I definitely, I definitely feel that it's definitely, you know, because they all, they talk about points of emphasis all over the years about different things, and sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. I do feel that it's very much become a point of emphasis. I think it's been talking to the officials. It's been very stressed, uh, very much stressed with them, and uh, I definitely think that it has uh, uh, definitely the, the hand checking has called a lot more than it has been in the past. All right, well there you go, Ken. Yep. Now, now we know. Yes, we got that. <laughs> all right, listen, Coach, we'll, we'll let you go. I do want to. <laughs> Uh, say thanks again for coming on the show tonight i look forward to seeing you on saturday and and, and best of luck this season oh thank you and uh we'll see you guys on saturday thanks Thanks coach good luck to you thank you all right, Ken, that was the head coach of the House and Wildcats, Greg Ward, and, and uh, the girls, that House and Girls, again, playing very well. Their first county victory this year was against Jackson Center Tigers, which is, is always a quality win. Very good team Jackson Center has, and uh, I was really surprised that uh, 
to see Houston knock off Jackson Center, especially after they had lost to Covington earlier in the season. But uh, I think Coach Ward's got the girls playing very well right now. All right, look forward to seeing how they do as the season goes on. And, Ken, I do want to go back to a uh, to boys basketball here for a second. Uh, did have kind of a, a milestone uh, or a record broken this past Saturday night and that St. Henry Rushi game that we talked about uh, in the first half of the show. Yes, we did. Uh, congratulations to Rushi boys basketball coach Bremigen. He became the all-time winningest coach in the history of the Shelby County League, uh, capturing his 418th victory, Craig. So uh, congratulations to the Rushi program. Coach Bremigen's done a fantastic job. And uh, he give uh, all the credit, of course, to the players and the co- and his assistant coaches, which uh, was I thought was a very nice gesture to him. But uh, again, hats off to Coach Bremigen uh, and congratulations. And wouldn't you know it, uh, they're going to Anna this Friday night, uh, the, the home of the coach, uh, Bob Anderson, whose record he just broke, too. Yeah, so that should be interesting. And uh, I would assume Bob Anderson will be in attendance at that game. So uh, we'll see what happens there. All right. And while we're throwing out congratulations, I do want to congratulate three MAC teams. Uh, yeah, Craig, you know, we talked a lot of MAC football this year, Craig, and all the MAC football that we covered, Craig. Did you really think they could win three state championships? But uh, congratulations to Coldwater, Marion Local, and Minster, who captured the football championships in Division 5, 6, and 7. Um, some of them games were just unbelievable. The Minster game, especially, Craig, uh, just some exciting football. And hats off to the OHSA, Craig. They moved it to everything to. Uh, the shoe over in Columbus and Ohio State University, and uh, it was uh, just real special to watch. Yeah, the att- I, I've read an article earlier this week, too, where the attendance was just uh, really up as well for, for various reasons, but uh, I'm not sure why they wouldn't have that there every year with yeah. that kind of those kind of results. I would think that they'll continue to uh, have the games there. All right, Ken, well, that's about going to wrap it up for us tonight. I do have one more thing to get to, and that is that trivia question you asked me at the beginning of the night. Give me the question again, and I'm going to check with TK back there on the telemetrics, see if we have any viewer response. Well, Craig, uh, the question tonight was, who is the all-time winning basketball coach for Fort Laramie boys basketball? Who is the all-time winning coach for Fort Laramie boys basketball? Is it John Kramer, George Hamlin, Dan Hegemeyer, or Charles Sharp? All right. Well, those are uh, three good answers for sure. I'm going to throw Charles Sharp out there because I'm still not convinced he was a coach there, but <laughs> you say he is, so I'll, I'll, I'll believe you. But uh, a couple of those guys won state titles over there, but I'm not sure if they're the answer. So, TK, help me out here. What, what do we got on the Fish Report telemetrics? Any help from the viewers? Well, they can help you out a little bit. They can, th- according to your viewers or our viewers, uh, throw out George Hamlin and Charles Sharp. But uh, <laughs> after that, it's a dead tie between – Coach Hegemeyer and Coach Kramer. So uh, I guess you got to flip a coin if you don't know. Well, you know, uh, Coach Hamlin got that that state championship in '77. I remember that, but I don't remember him having any kind of uh, you know massive amount of victories. And uh, I was around for the Dan Hegemeyer days. And as successful that, as that guy's been, I'm going to have to go with uh, with Coach Hegemeyer. Craig, you're exactly right. Coach Hegemeyer right. has 294 career victories on Fort Laramie. And, uh, yes, that, uh, you got the answer right this week. I know Coach, Coach Kramer was a popular uh, coach over there as well, and, and, uh, uh, but I just wasn't quite sure how many wins he had. So, all right, Ken, well, listen, that's going to do it for us tonight. Do you want to say special thanks to uh, Fort Army Coach Britton and Devin Braun for appearing on the show, as well as Coach Ward for coming on. Uh, kind of got a hold of him at the last minute, so appreciate him, him coming on our show tonight. Uh, Ken and I and the rest of the crew, hopefully we're all 100% next week. I'll be back again, same time, same place. But until then, have a great rest of the week, everyone, and good night. Hanging at the fish report. 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 For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report. Hanging at the fish report.